What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall market, how this may affect Tesla, what the news data and technicals are telling us, what may happen to like Spy and Apple and the QQQ and many other stocks. I'm going to break down what I believe is very likely to happen given this price action and news about Elon Musk that just came out. Now, before I talk about what Tesla is likely going to do, before I break down what's happening with the markets right now, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. The offer ends in just a couple of weeks. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So Tesla's up in the after hours. It's up about 70 cents as of right now. It started to pump at the end of the day. That's because of some bullish news that just came out involving Elon Musk. I will talk about that in just a couple of minutes, but I am seeing some red flags in the market simultaneously. Now, yes, the market could pump a little bit tomorrow. It could try to make an attempt to push up. I think Tesla has lots of poten potential to do so as well, getting closer to like 175 if it does break this area. But there is something that does concern me, and that's the sell signals we're getting for the markets, the bearish diver divergences, excuse me, forming right now. And I believe that all of this stuff may lead to more downside from the markets and even Tesla as we approach, uh, I would say, the middle of May going into June. I think there's downside coming for the markets. But before the downside comes, right, we could get one more pump, one more push for the markets in Tesla. Now, let's first talk about the market first and some news that came out. I mean, the PPI report came out pretty good, lower than expected, and that was awesome to see. Initial jobless claims were a little bit high at 264,000, which was higher than the forecast. This is showing some signs that the economy is tightening, the labor market is getting weaker, and the Fed has more and more reasons to slow down on their hawkish stance and maybe even pause sooner than expected because now we're seeing some signs that inflation is cooling off. We have to see the next reports first, of course, but so far so good. And now we're starting to see a tightening of the labor market. That's exactly what the Fed has been waiting for, and this is incentivizing them to slow down or even pause very soon. But until then, right, we have some time before the, the next FOMC meeting, we could get some negative news that may slow down the markets next week. Now, don't forget, we have some imports and exports data. We have some Michigan consumer sentiment data coming out. That's going to be very important. And this will affect the market with crazy volatility for the first 30 minutes. So the first 30 minutes are going to be pretty crazy. Then after that, we have some Fed speakers. They're going to be speaking later on during the day, so it's not as crazy. But the data coming out is not as big for tomorrow. We had Waller speaking out, making some claims about climate change and other things like that. Uh, he also mentioned that there's going to be a, a tightening of the credit markets, in his opinion, and there's a lot of work to be done. But besides that, I didn't see anything else that was too significant. For SPY, for tomorrow, we have a 1.6 put-to-call ratio. We have about almost 700,000 puts expiring, not as much as before. And we have about, I believe this is like 450,000 calls expiring. The majority of individuals have puts with the 410 put uh, 410 max pain, sorry. And that's going to be important for us. The market makers are incentivized to hold the market up, hold us above 410, and maybe even pump us even more. I think it's very possible. I think the setups on the markets suggest it's a possibility. But like I said before in my previous videos, I'm still very cautious for this market because I am getting some sell signals for the more medium term, and I will break them down in just a couple of minutes. But now let's talk about Elon Musk. The news has come out that Elon Musk said that he's stepping down. Whoops. I think I just clicked something. Sorry about that, guys. Elon Musk said that he's going to be stepping down as uh, Twitter's CEO, and he may have actually found another CEO for the company. So that's some great news. Very, very awesome news. It just came out a couple of minutes ago, and this is very bullish. This is why Tesla started pumping at the end of the day. Now, what is so good about this? If you guys weren't watching Tesla for the last couple of weeks in the news, Basically, when Elon Musk uh, has been involved in like uh, buying Twitter and other factors like that, this has been bearish for Tesla because Elon Musk has limited time and many of Tesla's biggest 
shareholders have talked against Elon Musk making moves like that because they believe Tesla needs a full-time CEO and they have been looking into finding a replacement for him, at least some of them. Now, that is part of why Tesla sold off pretty hard when Tesla, uh, when, I'm sorry, when Elon Musk was buying Twitter. And now the news is coming out that, hold on, he's found a new CEO. He's going to be stepping away. And this is great news because Elon Musk will have more time for Tesla. He'll be more focused on Tesla. And investors and and different shareholders for Tesla are going to look at this as a very positive thing. The news may turn more positive, and this could help Tesla pump a little bit more. Now, we had some negative news. I did mention this yesterday that Panasonic delayed the Tesla 4680 battery cell production. It's just a delay, and this is part of why Tesla traded kind of flat. But once again, this was coming out yesterday. So it's not as significant. I'm just seeing this on lots of headlines, which is why I'm I'm calling this out. I think the new news about Elon Musk is more significant. And then finally, Tesla's launched a new power wall in Spain. So they're continuing to grow as their <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys, as their energy sector continues to grow and expand, it's going to help bring more revenue for Tesla because the energy sector is up immensely compared to the previous quarters for Tesla and also for last year. Energy for Tesla and energy storage are massive, massive businesses. And I believe this is very bullish news as well going forward, at least for the longer term. Now, for the short term or the more medium term, I do have some mixed news for you guys. Looking at the Model 3 data, we're continuing to see inventory levels soar to the moon. So the Model 3s are not selling as much as the way they used to. And that's despite the fact that we're getting closer to Memorial Day. And lots of cars tend to sell during that time. I'm hoping this comes down a bit. So that's why it's not the best of news for their next deliveries report but the good news is when you look at the model y which is their most popular vehicle especially in europe i believe it was the third top selling car in all of the us and in europe it's the top selling car for the ev sector in europe as well but anyways the model y is killing it inventory levels are just crashing this was when they announced their sixth price cut right over here and you can see it's helping them big time get more buyers over and over and over again and then Tesla used another tactic where they raised prices just a tiny bit. So the headlines were saying Tesla's starting to raise prices and more people started to buy in because of their fear of missing out on the deals. Inventory levels used to be around 600 just a couple of days ago. Not, not a few days ago, about a week and a half ago, they were around like 600. Uh, and then just a few days ago, they were around 195. Now they're currently around, I believe around 80 or something like that, below 90. 90 so far so that's a good sign for tesla big improvements are being made as far as tesla goes we had some low volume 100 million but we did close green on low volume and that's a good sign because tesla's price is more sensitive to less volume on top of that the short volume did go up when it hits these high levels it tends to get rejected so if it comes down here we may see tesla get shorted less tomorrow and that can help us out with the share price on top of that, uh, the price price ratio is likely going to start pumping a little bit to the upside because Tesla has been outperforming the market quite well, especially the S&P 500. And Tesla has a tendency of being green about 48% of the time on Fridays, not always the strongest of days. And the short interest on Tesla went up just two days ago to about $23 million, but recently it came down. So that's a good sign for Tesla too, as Tesla is continuing to outperform the market and improving its price action. So now let's break down what's happening to Tesla. Is this thing looking more bullish or bearish? Well, on the daily chart, we're about to get a crossover on the PPO. It was holding up the 50 EMA quite nicely over the last uh, day. And this is using the chart without the extended hours. And it's looking quite nice. It actually closed just below the 200 EMA without the extended hours. And there's this gap up here around the 180 area if tesla keeps getting good news it might try to fill that gap but in order for it to do so it has to break and hold 174.4 to 175 if it holds that area this thing can start pumping even harder and tesla is pumping in the after hours right now after the elon musk news that came out that's a good sign for tesla however when we look at the chart with uh, the extended hours because i oftentimes trade with the extended hours because it gives you more information that's vital it's also looking quite nice right so these two charts are agreeing on the same thing this is looking good because you could quite clearly see that tesla was forming this bullish divergence just right here and started pumping just a little bit on top of that it's been holding above the 200 ema on the hourly time frame that's a good sign for tesla holding up quite nicely almost forming a w right here and this is starting to look like an accumulation it broke above 174.44 in the after hours and it's looking quite nice but i'm not as sure if it's going to continue to break out i mean we are forming 
possible bearish divergence right here. So it might cool off just a little bit by the time we open, but that does not mean it's just going to like, you know, tank from here. It, it most definitely could try to make an attempt to the upside. If it holds above 175, if Tesla can manage to do that, it's going to hit 180. That would be very awesome. However, I do have some bad news for you guys. If if you are a Tesla like shareholder, and that's the fact that there's likely going to be downside coming later on by next week, if not within two weeks for the stock market. And I think this will have a negative effect on Tesla and you have to be prepared for it anyways. On the daily chart of Tesla, yes, it's looking strong. Could Tesla try to pump tomorrow? It's a possibility. Okay, Tesla could try to pump. But here's the big but. The charts right now are not looking too great for SPY in the QQQ. And I'm going to show you exactly why. So on the daily chart on SPY, we have a possible head and shoulders like formation, right? There's also a bearish divergence that developed on the smaller time frames. There was one that developed right here on SPY. And then on the one hour time frame, I'm seeing signs of another bearish divergence. Uh, right here, you could see it. Price made, let me just double check this. So right around here, the price will just start to continue to pump. But overall, the RSI is just continuing to weaken. And then right around here, it was starting to pump a bit, but it's just not looking as strong. Now, could you argue in favor of like a, you know, inverse head and shoulders? It's a possibility, but I'm not counting on it being way too strong. There is this gap on SPY. Let me just break, bring this up real quick. Uh, there's a gap around 415. We may make an attempt to fill this gap first before we start to see more downside. But I don't think that there's a whole lot of room for upside left unless SPY breaks like 417. But I just don't think that's going to happen. It's looking weaker as the days go on. So here's what I'm seeing, okay? There are two possibilities. Number one, we might pump a little bit to try to fill this gap tomorrow. Maybe the market makers try to squeeze shorts. But I'm not counting on it being the bigger move because a lot of shorts are going to pile in up here and start to reposition. Because by next week, I'm expecting the market to start pulling back. And I think we're going to fill this gap down to 406 and maybe even break down lower than that. Over the next couple of weeks, I think SPY is going to start filling a lot of these gaps. It's going to make its way down to 400 or even lower than that over the next week and a half. I believe there's more downside coming. The downside move is going to be bigger than the upside move that could come tomorrow. And I am going to look at this as an opportunity. Now, I'm not going to say what I'm doing because I'm not giving financial advice, but this is a shorting opportunity if the market gets a pump tomorrow. Okay. Now, why do I say this though? It, it can't just be based off SPY. There are other factors and other reasons why I'm saying this. On the QQQ, here's the thing. The QQQ is forming a bigger bearish divergence on the daily chart. Look at the RSI and the MACD trending down as the price makes these new highs. On the one hour time frame, the same thing is happening. Uh, obviously, the, the RSI is continuing to make these lower highs. So it was like really overbought here compared to this level right here. Same thing with the MACD on the one hour time frame. So the one hour is agreeing with the daily chart. But here's the bigger thing. When you look at, we could use either the daily or the one hour for this. Let me bring back my drawings. Look at this. I know I made this a little bit smaller. I can make this bigger, but it doesn't matter. This is a rising wedge, okay, on the QQQ. That's clearly a bearish uh, development, and it's going to lead to a bearish outcome. Now, yes, we have this daily crossover on the PPO, but let me bring back the extended hours. With the extended hours, I mean, it, it also has the, the bullish cross on the PPO, but we do have a bearish divergence at the same time. So that tells me two things. The QQQ is either going to just start pumping a little bit more, but it's going to be in a topping process. Then it's going to start breaking down by next week, in my opinion. Second possibility is it might not even pump much more from here. It might just start downtrending. Both of them are very possible, but I am leaning more towards the bearish side for the next couple of weeks. I think it is possible for us to pump a little bit more, but like I said before, I'm not counting on it being the bigger move. Now, for other indicators suggesting downside, look at the dollar right now. The dollar is green. Dollar is looking like it's showing more strength than before, but there's no confirmation of the breakout just yet from this downtrend it's been on. Now, looking at the dollar, it also has a bullish divergence that developed right here. I know it's a little bit uh, small. I apologize if the chart's kind of small, but look at the RSI on this uptrend. Look at the MACD on the uptrend. Look at the price on the downtrend, right? So a bullish divergence developed on the dollar. It's going to break out soon, most likely. If it breaks and holds above the, the 50 EMA, it's going to be a bearish sign. I don't know yet. Uh, it has a bearish divergence in the shorter time frame, I believe. Let me just double check this. So yeah, it has a bearish divergence. 
right? So it might come down for the short term. So on the small time frame, there's a tiny bearish divergence. That means the market could pump a little bit more, maybe. It's a big maybe for the short term, maybe tomorrow, maybe for just a couple of trading days, maybe a, a trading day or two uh, for going forward. But then for the more medium term, when you zoom out of the charts, the dollar is telling us that by the time we get to like mid-May approaching June, the dollar is going to look bullish. So it's, it's kind of mixed, but it's looking more bullish for the more medium term, which means that by the time we get closer to June, by the time next week, next week comes, in my opinion, the market has downside. I hope that's clear. Short term for tomorrow, maybe even like Monday, the market could hold up and maybe even pop a little bit for next week by like mid next week going into like friday of next week approaching the later days the market has downside coming the market's going to get rug pulled okay that's what the dollar is telling us hope that's as clear as possible the sqq is telling us the same thing we have a bullish divergence developing on the sqqq uh <coughs> excuse me on the sqqq let me just double check this there's a bullish divergence on the daily chart on the hourly time frame too the sqq is telling us that the QQQ and the Nasdaq are going to see downside in the future. Could it come down a little bit more? Yes, as long as the bullish divergence remains, it's going to start pumping, okay? And I expect this thing to be pumping a lot by the time we get closer to June. What does that mean? Could the market pump more tomorrow? Sure. But by the time we get to next week approaching June, the SQQQ, SQQQ sorry, is telling us the market has downside coming, approaching June. It's going to be significant it's not going to be like a small you know one percent drop we're probably going to see the s p 500 drop at least two to three percent maybe even more than that at four or five percent the debt ceiling can play a role more bank collapses the fed all of these things may play a role as we approach the fomc meeting by mid-june finally for what else do i have uh the 10-year treasury yield isn't really working the way it typically does it's actually a little bit down so not a whole lot is going on. There's a possible inverse head and shoulders here. If it starts pumping, typically if it pumps, that's going to be bearish for the market. So if that happens, that could turn us bearish. Now, let me just quickly and briefly go over a couple of other stocks for you guys before I end this video. And then I'm going to talk about Tesla just one more time. For Amazon, I mean, it's pumping quite nicely, but there is a bearish divergence I saw. Let me just double check it. This is looking like it. Let me just see this. Uh, Actually, I'm not seeing it as much on the daily time frame, but I think on the hourly, I saw a bearish divergence when you include uh, the extended hours. So there is a bearish divergence on Amazon so far. Uh, looks to me like it's going to pull back soon. Could it pump a little bit tomorrow? It's possible. It could try a little bit more, but it's going to likely get a pullback. That's going to be the bigger move for the medium term. And everything I'm saying is going to translate for many different stocks, at least the large majority of them. NVIDIA, uh, this is forming a potential, I'm not seeing a, there is a bearish divergence here, but I'm not seeing much of a bullish divergence. It could still try to bounce tomorrow with the market and then get a sell-off later on. But NVIDIA looks to me like it's a very good short and I see more downside for the more medium term as we approach June. For Apple, there's a clear bearish divergence on the one hour time frame. What is Apple going to do? It could pump a little bit more tomorrow, just a little bit more before a big amount of downside comes. Uh, I think it's going to fill the gap down to the 160s by the time we get to June. I think Apple has more downside coming, but there's no confirmation of it starting to downtrend yet. Okay, so it could pump a little bit more as long as the divergence remains, the odds will favor more downside by the time we get to June, uh, starting as soon as next week, maybe. Uh, it could pump more and then see downside, or it could even just start downtrending from here, right? Either one of those are possible. The bigger move is going to be the downside. Could we get a final pump? Yes. But like I said before, the, the bigger move is going to be the downside. Google is stronger than what I predicted as well. I mean, Google's just ripping to the moon. It's very overbought, so it needs to cool off a bit. Uh, not too much else. And it's about to get a crossover on the MACD. It needs to cool off. Very healthy pullback is fine. Meta is forming, I believe, a bearish divergence. Last time I checked it. Bearish divergence on Meta, it could pull back a little bit and then try to fight for the 50 EMA. If it tries to bounce off that, it could just trade sideways. But then I do see Meta potentially pulling back by mid uh, May, approaching June. Okay, guys. So one last time, could the market pump more tomorrow? It's possible, but I'm not counting that as the bigger move. I think the market's in the topping process. There's a clear head and shoulders on SPY for us to, to basically invalidate this head and shoulders. We need to see SPY break and hold. 417. If it does that, it could get to 420. I don't think that's going to happen. Seeing how weak it's looking, though, 
Uh, I'm seeing two possibilities. Either we pump a little bit more to form the right shoulder, and then we just get rug pulled as we get closer to June, or it, it might just fail to do so. It might just get a very small bounce and fail to get up to this gap fill at 415. Maybe it gets stopped out for earlier, and then the downside comes. Either way, I'm seeing potential for a, a final attempt to pump and then downside for the S&P 500, also for the QQQ. And I do believe that maybe the market makers could try to get us to pump a little bit. It is a possibility too, but I'm not counting on it being a big pump. It's just going to be minor. We could try to get to about 415 to just end it and then get the rug pull. Either way, the bigger move is going to be the downside. I'm making that as clear as possible. I want to warn you in advance going forward. For Tesla... It's looking nice. There is going to be a test of, of, I believe, 175 tomorrow. If it can break and hold it, it might try to get to 180 off the Elon Musk bullish news. However, even if it fails at 175, if it breaks it, I mean, 180 could come. Either way, I'm not looking at way too much upside for Tesla because for the medium term, I'm seeing downside for the markets and it will drag Tesla down. And Tesla will see downside by next week, if not approaching June, in my honest opinion, because of how the collective market is running almost on one algorithm. On the one hour time frame, there is a bearish divergence on Tesla, so it might pull back approaching the open, it might try to get one more pump as the day goes on. Uh, if the market maker squeezes, then Tesla has the potential to hit 175. If it breaks that, 180 could come. But like I said, guys, not looking way too great for the upside. It looks better for shorts to reposition. Uh, that's what the shorts are going to do. Not saying that I'm doing that. Doing that, I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying this from like Wall Street's perspective. They're going to be looking to short at these high levels. Now, if a bearish outcome comes, if there's a bad piece of news on Tesla, watch 170, then watch the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame, followed by the 200 around this 166 to 167 area. I'm leaning more towards maybe one last attempt to hold these levels if not try to break out on tesla it, it looks good the setup is looking quite nice it's going to cool off in the morning thanks to this bearish divergence of course might try to bounce uh, on for friday but then like i said before that's not going to be the biggest move i think more downside is due for the markets and we're likely going to see it as we approach june and i can't see a big rug pull coming i want to warn you guys well in advance for it spy is going to make its way back to the 400s uh, by the time we get to, I would say, within one to two weeks, it should happen. Tesla is going to make its way back down to the 160s within two to three weeks. Okay. Could we pump more tomorrow first before that happens? Yes. But I just want to warn you guys well in advance. Okay. Thank you for listening. Please enjoy the merch I have if you're interested in buying anything. Uh, sorry if I come off as a pessimistic person. I know some people have said that in the comments. That's fine with me. Say whatever you want. I'm okay with it. But I'm honestly not being optimistic or pessimistic. I'm optimistic for the long term for Tesla. But right now, I'm just telling you the truth based off what the data and charts are telling us. I need to be objective. I need to be honest. And that's what I do on this channel. Okay? The charts don't care about your feelings. They don't care about my feelings. They can remain irrational longer than we remain solvent. Thank you for listening. Enjoy some merch if you're interested around the comment section. And don't forget about the Moomoo link. The offer ends in just a few weeks. If you put in 100 bucks, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks. Thank you, Tesla to the Moon, because the long term is very bright. And peace out.